Hi, Anthony and Bob Barker are back here today to finish up this router table. So today we're going to be doing the top, uh, getting in the on and off switch, and all the dust collection in the fence. So let's get to it. The first thing I did for this part is to find a very flat piece of plywood. So I cut that in half and since it was pre-finished I had to sand off the finish that way when I laminate these together their glue will hold. Now this really didn't have to be a double layer but I figured uh, laminating these two pieces together is just going to get it extra thick and less chance of it moving over time. So after I got that in place I kind of clamped it together and then screwed it in. I did take these screws out of place after the glue was dry. And next up is getting the opening for the router lift. So first thing I did is just get all the measurements set up where exactly I want it to be. So essentially I'm just marking off a little X in the center and I'm gonna use that to put the router lift on top. And then after that, we'll move over to our template so we can get that whole router out. So now we got the router in place and we can get our template set up. So basically I'm just using a bunch of scrap pieces here and just making a box around the router lift itself. That way I'll kind of get uh, this template exactly how it needs to be. And to secure it in place while I'm doing this, I'm just using the old blue tape trick. So put some blue tape down there and then some on the back of my template pieces and then I'll use some CA glue to, to get those two together and that'll hold it in place for the router and when I'm done it'll be easy to tear off. And I also did want to mention that the thickness of these template pieces are actually quite important um, depending on the router bit that you uh, have. I used a top bearing flush trim bit as you can see here. So you want to make sure that your depth of the cut will still allow that top bearing to ride on to the wood. So there I'm setting the depth and you can see I actually changed my template because I needed a little bit of a thicker piece of a wood for the guide. And then you just basically just ride the edge all around. Now the corners are kind of rounded off, so I just kind of freehanded that one um, and just to kind of get it roughly where I need it to go. So first thing I did, I just went around the whole edge and got that edges uh, marked out and then I kind of went back and then routed out a little extra because I wanted about an inch, inch and a half lip on the inside for the router lift to sit on. And then for the rest of that, we're just going to end up cutting that out with a jigsaw in a minute. So it looks good, so I just went ahead and ripped off those templates and you can see they come off nice and easy with the blue tape there. And so the next part is getting ready to cut out that center part. So just to make a nice easy uh, opening for the jigsaw, I'm just cutting some holes all in these corners and then we're going to use that to start uh, cutting it out. And every time I use this jigsaw, I remind myself, I really need to get a new one because this thing is so terrible like it, everything is like loose and not really well working on it I have to fight it the whole time making the cut but it still gets the job done and when we finally finish up that cut we can just go ahead and pop out that center section and so we got a nice hole there for the router lift and unfortunately I didn't go quite as deep as I needed it's okay if you go a little too deep but you don't want it to be proud of the surface so I just put my template back on and just did another quick pass with my routers um, just to make sure I had it at the depth I needed and this time it went perfectly. So I just went ahead and left the router lift in place and then start working on the trim for this top surface. It's not totally necessary but just a little extra protection for a little bit more fragile uh, plywood edges there. So we just glued and nailed those into place while just kind of measuring it as we went. And then once we get that into place we can go ahead and secure the top with uh, some screws from underneath as well as the pocket holes that we made on the first part. And I was really careful when I made the initial uh, cabinet because I wanted to keep that top nice and level. I didn't want any of these screws to pull it out of level. So I went back and double checked and thankfully it was nice and level all the way around. Now we can work on fully installing the router lift. So first we're just putting it in place and marking out the holes um, where we're going to be putting in some threaded inserts. So for this one it has those four corners that have the bigger bolts. So we just go ahead and screw those out. Kind of clean up the edges there and then you can just screw in those threaded inserts and I often will use epoxy in there just to kind of give a little extra locking power. Then we put it back in place and do a quick fit just to make sure that all the bolts line up and that it stays below the surface. Then there's a little bit of sanding but since most of it pre-finished thankfully I didn't have to do too much. And I considered putting some uh, edge banding on this but I ended up deciding just to uh, put a little uh, wipe on polyurethane just to protect these edges. Didn't really care as much how the edges look for this particular piece. 
I'm judging by how much he's paying attention. The shop supervisor wasn't too uh, concerned on how the edge, edges were treated on this part as well. All right, so now that we got the table made, it's time to get the router put in, into place. Um, now I'm doing this so that the speed adjustment here is gonna be facing forward here in case I ever need to uh, get to it and adjust it. It's gonna be easier to, to reach. Uh, it's not so important for the on off switch and the, the cord because it's gonna be going out the back and I'm gonna have an external switch to turn it on and off. So let's go ahead and put this in. So to get this in place, it's pretty simple. You just set it into the lift and there's a single Allen wrench here that you adjust. Get that nice and tight. It's ready to be put down. Then all you gotta do is screw these back in and then we can use all the leveling pins in each one of these to get this perfectly flush with the top. All right, so now we got the router in place. We just put this cap on and give it a whirl. Now, as I was putting this video together, I realized it was kind of like all over the place on my process. So I kind of reorganized it just to make it make a little bit more sense. So for here, I'm using the router you just saw me install to make the dado grooves for the T-Tracks. And so I just use a nice uh, straight piece of wood as a guide there and cut it out to where I needed it and then get a chisel just to kind of corner off these edges. You don't really have to do that. I just thought it looked nicer for uh, to have a corner edge to match the T-Track as opposed to just a round piece that kind of stuck out past where the T-Track sits. So then we can give it a good test fit and I use these uh, blue pieces of tape on there when I'm cutting it out, not to help with anything on the cut, more just to, so I can see where my marks are where it needs to be cut. So with that one in place, we can go ahead and do the other side and we did those identical and then we'd use the self-centering bit and then screwed those in place and then the same thing for the front edge here. And we did use the blue tape here just to help prevent a little uh, damage to the edges there. So we just go ahead and tap that in place and then we can screw it in just like it did, did the other ones and it's ready to go. So next up on the list was making the router fence. So first thing I did is just went through all my remaining pieces of wood and just choosing the flattest pieces that I had left and then had a long discussion with Bob Barker on how tall we wanted this fence to be. He had some very valuable input so we ended up deciding on a size and went back to the crosscut sled to get it cut out. And for here, I'm basically cutting out a couple squares and I definitely had to use my crosscut sled because I know it's 90 degrees and I wanted the edges of this to help keep the fence uh, at a full true 90 degrees. So we made those squares and then I just turned it on side and cut out a couple wedges of them and we'll be using those later. So then we get our main fence pieces together and we're gonna laminate those. That way we have a nice thick chunky piece that's not gonna move on us. And I used the edge of one of my uh, long levelers uh, to clamp this to. That way I know there's not gonna be any bending or bowing of it as the glue is drying up. It's gonna keep it, help keep it nice and straight. So I just put a whole bunch of clamps on there and we, that should hold it nice in place. So for here I'm just cutting off a little strip because I'm gonna be putting that up on top uh, where I'm gonna be putting in some of the T-Tracks and this is really more just for cosmetic uh, purposes. So for that one, I also just glued it in place. Then we can get our T-Track cut out and then start working on the bottom piece. So we cut out another one and then I'm using the crosscut sled here just to put a big opening which is gonna be the spot where you're gonna have the opening for the router bit and the dust collection. And this one I just used a regular blade and just made a whole bunch of passes till I get I got the opening that I was looking for. Then back to the fence, we want to uh, create an opening here uh, for the router bit and dust collection as well. So for this one, it's a little bit of a chunkier piece, so I decided just to use my dado stack. Um, and then we just kind of made multiple passes until we got the opening in depth that we were looking for. Next up was putting the T-Track in place. Before we did that, we just go ahead and soften up the edge of that little piece that we glued on earlier. Then we can just set it in and uh, pre-drill the holes and then screw it into place and that won't be going anywhere. So to attach the bottom, we're gonna be doing uh, pocket holes 
And so we just do those and then screw it into place. And then we're gonna be using those wedges that we made earlier just to make sure that it stays at a nice good 90 degrees. And so for this one, I'm gonna be screwing it in from up front. So we pre drilled a hole there and countersunk those screws. And then we did the same thing from below. And then that's gonna keep that securely on the edges there. And we also did glue that as well. So it's never gonna come apart. And we're gonna do four of these to kind of spread throughout the piece, leaving a good opening in the middle for the dust collection there. So that gives us a nice solid fence that should stay nice and square. So now here we're gonna be putting in uh, the port for the dust collection. So I just put in some epoxy and then just gonna set that in place and then just use some screws to, to fully secure it. Now you can make your own port, but I just got this one, it was pretty cheap anyways, so I figured why not. So now we're gonna cut out some grooves here that will accept the T-track bolts on the bottom part. And I just kind of made them long enough so I got a little side-to-side uh, -side mobility for the fence as well. So we used the spiral bit there and cut both of those out. And you can see how that's gonna help uh, get this right where we need it and make it nice and adjustable. And if you're interested in any of the tools or supplies we use, we do have links below if you wanna check those out. So after we got that in place, we're moving on to the adjustable fence. So I cut out a couple very straight pieces of wood. And then here I'm just rounding off the edges so it uh, moves really nice. And then again, using uh, the spiral bit to cut out some grooves here. So I did these in two parts. I made like one initial groove for there and then I got another thicker uh, bit and made a partial cut on it. That way the bolt that I'll be using to secure these in place will sit below the surface and nothing's gonna rub up against it as I'm using the table. So now we're gonna get this mounted onto the fence itself. So I set those where I needed them and just marked out where I'm gonna be putting in some threaded inserts. So I just go ahead and drill all those out and then we can screw all four of them into place. And then now we can actually test fit it into place. And so I use some bolts with a washer behind it and it uh, keeps this nice and adjustable so I can set it if I need to or I can loosen it up and readjust it. With the fence done, we can get back to the dust collection. So I got this other port that I'm using for uh, the main drawer port and I just screw that into place and then I'm making this little holder just using some pocket hole screws and this is gonna support the other little Y fitting here as you can see. Now I do not have a dedicated system right now so I use my shop vac so this is gonna help keep it nice and in place uh, as I'm moving this around and using uh, the router table to keep my dust collection going. Then we just uh, connect these uh, hosing with the hose clamps and then I noticed this is kind of loose and when I'm doing it, it might fall off so I just put another hose clamp on the other side and then when I put that into place um, it actually holds it really well so it, mo it won't move in and out with those uh, clamps keeping it secure. Now initially when I got this it said it was two and a half along with my, my hose except for it's actually two and a half inside um, so this won't fit on there so I already epoxied it on so what I did is I got this uh, adapter so this one actually fits in there just slightly loose so I'm gonna use some tape just to kind of around the edges and I can shove that in and then this hose will be able to connect well on this part and that actually works out kind of good there because that's gonna hold it off the edge of the table too so we go ahead and do that and you can see it's a nice, good, tight fit. So then we can just reconnect that Y fitting and then the hosing from the top fence to that as well. And then this is the power core that we just use the grommet just to kind of clean it up and make it a little nicer there. Then we also use these wire clips just to run it up and around and over to the on off switch, which I did put on a little earlier. For that, it was very simple. You just basically figure out where you want it and screw it into place. And I chose this just because I'm right handed and it was nice and handy. So then after that, the, one of the finishing touches here, I just put in all these leveling pins and then we screw all those into place and gives you some good fine adjustability. And then I use a straight edge just to go along all the surfaces just to make sure no wood is gonna catch as I'm using the router. So I just wanna go over all the little details on the router table. So we got a nice straight fence um, and we got these adjustable front pieces. So this can kind of slide in and out. Uh, same thing with this one. Then we can tighten it in place as needed. We got our dust collection here, which hooks up to the port. We also have uh, dust collection in this main uh, front drawer right here. 
Um, and of course, this is fully adjustable back and forth as needed. Um, you know, kind of set up where we want it in conjunction with the bit. We've got the T-track for the feather board and for the guard here. We've got the T-track up front for another feather board. We got our on and off safety switch right here. And of course, we got lots of drawers. With these drawers, um, as well as the dust collection in here, I'm trying them out and see how they feel. I went with a design that's, that's functional, so we'll, you know, see how it works for me. Uh, for this one, we got lots of, lots of uh, storage for the bits. I did a quarter inch shank for this one and a half inch shank for the bottom one. So I don't have that many bits right now, but it's got lots of room for uh, growth in the future. And on this one, I just have basically two little platforms that house all the important stuff, like, you know, the, like all the things that we're gonna be using for the router table. So, and then for our dust collection port, I'm gonna use this for a little bit and see how I feel about it. And then of course we got two huge drawers that'll hold anything else we need. So I used the router and this part of the dust collection didn't work out so well. The outside was great. It kept a nice clean uh, shop, but it just collected in there. So I cleaned it out and then we're gonna go ahead and run a test piece here just so we can see how much would collect with just that one single cut. And then we're gonna add some extra ventilation to this space because if you don't have enough airflow, then it just really impedes the suction. So we're gonna do five holes here in back. And so I'm just kind of drilling partial way through. So I went some through the front and some through the inside. That way it keeps a nice clean edge there. And then it's pretty well hidden back here anyways. So then we redo our test cut and take a look at our results. This time there was pretty much nothing in there. And you can see the side-by-side -side results before and after the extra ventilation. All right, and that's the build. This was a super fun one to build. Um, it turned out great and I'm really happy with it. We do have detailed plans on how to make this if you're interested in yourself, check the links below. Also all the tools and supplies that we used are also in links below if you're interested in that. So watch out for the next video. We're gonna be putting this thing to use. We'll see you guys then.